ourselves right back into what could be in the mix and getting this one's huge before two home games. They're a good football team and you know any given Sunday anybody can win but this is time of year that someone's going to break out right now and so hell like, like I told my team it might as well be us. Happy Thanksgiving everyone from the Cherry Dome, the Dallas Palace, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. A pivotal game in both team seasons. We are very excited for this matchup. Going downfield has a receiver, wide open, reception made. Travis Benjamin sneaks behind the Dallas defense. Three receivers right, laps the hands, looking left. Nowhere to go, now to the middle of the field, touchdown! Rivers to Hunter Henry, and he's high-stepping and celebrating. Passing down, wants to go up top, has Tyrell Williams, catch made! Touchdown, Chargers. Rose to his left. Reception made. Keenan Allen breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Chargers. 90-yard pick six. Desmond King. Touchdown, Chargers. I'm so proud of you guys. Let me tell you. You got two wins in 11 days. You were out, you executed, and we got that win as a team. Yes, sir. Two dominate wins. Yes, sir. All three phases. Outstanding. Champions on three. One, two, three. Champions. Welcome to Access Chargers presented by Toyota. I'm your host, Haley Elwood. In this week's show, our radio team of Matt Money Smith and Nick Hardwick answer all of your questions in Ask the Booth. Then we go inside the team's My Cause, My Cleats unboxing, and later Nick Hardwick returns in Goal Line to Goal Line with Trevor Williams. But we kick things off with Chargers offensive coordinator Ken Wisenhunt as he breaks down plays from the team's 28-6 Thanksgiving Day victory over the Dallas Cowboys in X's and O's. Rivers takes the shotgun snap, looking left, throwing left for Eckler, has the left sideline at the 40, steps inside the 25, still going inside the 20. Big play, Rivers to Eckler. We get to our first third down. It's third down and three. Ball's on the 41. You know, you're thinking at that point, well, let's get the first down so we can sustain, we can sustain the drive. But one of the things that we had built into this play was an option to Austin Eckler, a young guy that's been making some plays for us. And you can see right now, when he goes outside, we put him outside right here, and a linebacker lines up over the top of him. So now we're thinking, okay, we got a shot. You can see initially, Austin right here comes off the ball, and all of a sudden he chops his feet right here at five yards, okay? Now, look at the position of the linebacker right here. He thinks that Austin is either stopping or going to break in. So now what you see is him up the sideline. The only guy that can stop this is the safety coming over the top. Phillips sees this and makes a great throw over the top right to Austin, and ultimately that led to a touchdown for us off of the first series. Here comes the blitz, Rivers has, oh, Tyrell Williams underneath, wide open to the 40, 45, 50, 45 of Dallas before he's pushed out of bounds. It's third down, um, it's on the next drive, and uh, what we've got here is a protection call. You can see the way the lines turn and Phillips sets the protection up, but what happens here is the linebacker, he's on a delay blitz. So our protection is, is going to each side and all of a sudden we got a void in the middle. The linebacker sees it and he hits it. Now this is on Phillip to see this and he knows he's got to get the ball out. But you'll see Tyrell coming across your picture right here going left to right and he's the outlet throw for this. Phillip's starting to let the ball go. Tyrell is right here. Linebacker is right in his face. But look at where the ball ends up getting. That's the thing that's really, really incredible. One of the things that makes Phillip so good. He lets the ball go. The ball is completed all the way over on the other side of him. But as we go through this in slow motion, look at where the ball ends up hitting Tyrell, right in the hand, so he's in stride and is able to get the first down. A great example of the accuracy of Phillip, his calmness in the pocket, and being able to put it on a receiver where he can get a good run after the catch. When we return on Access Chargers, we ask the booth with Matt Money Smith and Nick Hardwick, and check out the Chargers lacing up for My Cause, My Cleats. Stay tuned. 
shotgun. Two receivers left, looking that way. Now rolls out under pressure. And that pass is picked off. Desmond King, 25, 30, cuts inside of the 35, 40, 45, 50. No one in front of him. He's going to go to the end zone. The rookie out of Iowa at the 10, 5, 90 yard pick six. Desmond King, touchdown, Chargers, knock on wood. After two decisive victories over the past couple weeks, the Chargers seem to be peaking at the most important time of the year by getting hot as the weather cools down. Here's our radio team of Matt Money-Smith and Nick Hardwick discussing a potential Bolts playoff push if Sunday's game against the Cleveland Browns is considered a trap and more in Ask the Booth. Welcome to Ask the Booth. You can do it through any of our Charger social media platforms, through Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, however you may want to get us your questions. Seems as though, believe it or not, Nick, many more positive questions these days. Oh. As uh, we look forward to the final five games of the season, the Chargers sit at five and six, but you can make a case they're the hottest team in football, or at least one of them, having won five of their last seven. So Ryan sends in the question, do you think if we run the table, maybe he's a backup fullback. I don't the name <laughs> Good job, was. Ryan. Um, You've been and, putting great work in. Finish 10 and 6, that we will win the division. Yes, the Chargers win the division if they go 10 and 6. Absolutely. A little bit of their own destiny in their hands. Going to play the Chiefs again at the end of the year. And the Chiefs have really struggled of late. And I do believe the Chargers, if they win the last five games, they're the division champs. The Browns are over, but given last year's result, is this a trap game for us? Which I think actually helps. The fact the Chargers lost last year prevents it from being a trap Exactly game. right. That's yeah. it. You go in there in that locker room and you ask the guys about this game coming up, and they are still stung by that loss Christmas Eve last year in Cleveland, and the only victory that the Browns were able to get. Yeah. This is not a trap game, and the guys realize they're five and six. After the game, talked to Anthony Lynn in the locker room on Thanksgiving Day, and he said, Nick, we're five and six. There are no trap games. Trap game? We're not even 500 yet. Yeah, the uh, I do think that's a big deal, though. I would imagine that all the guys that were on the team last year really want to make sure that they erase that memory, that they were the one team. That, well, look, it's hard to go 0-16 and in the NFL. Believe it or not, the Browns are going to get a win. I, I, I believe it. It won't be this week. I believe not, it. Not yeah. after this was the team they got the one win against last year. All right, finally, uh, Phillip Rivers, Keenan Allen have been on a tear the past couple weeks, which, by the way, congratulations to Phillip Rivers, your Offensive Player of the Week. Um, will it continue between those two? It can continue, week, but like game. we talked about earlier, I think you've got to show a little bit of restraint and not let everybody get onto the tendencies and cue onto that Keenan Allen and figure out how to slow that train down. So maybe at the beginning of the game, just a little bit enough to get this offense going in the right direction and then let somebody else take the reins for a little bit and also a good time to give Keenan Allen an in-game rest, if you will kind of like we saw against the Bills. And that certainly seemed to benefit them. I mean, there was not a set of heavy legs on that team in Dallas on the short week. Obviously, it's not a short week, but this time of year, you know, I mean, you can speak from experience. Everybody's dealing with nicks oh, and bruises and yeah. bumps and, and things they're trying to get over. So if, in fact, the Chargers can continue their care and get up big, it would be nice to see them get some rest specifically for, uh, for Keenan since he's been putting in big work. All right, that's it. Remember, you can always submit questions through whichever social media platform you prefer, be it uh, the chat snap, as the old <laughs> men like to call it, the Instagram, the Twitter, or uh, Facebook, whatever it may be. We'll take them anyway, and hopefully we'll be back next week talking about this team being at 500 for the first time since they were 0-0 zero and zero going into that late Monday nighter where we had hoped, but unfortunately didn't, have the time of our lives. <laughs> For the second season in a row, nearly 30 Chargers will participate in the NFL's My Cause, My Cleats initiative, which allows players to wear custom cleats honoring charitable causes that are important to them. Here's a look at the players checking out their cleats for the first time and explaining why this initiative allows them to use their platform for the greater good. Being able to, you know, show people and enlighten people um, about these causes and bring awareness to them, I mean, it's amazing. We got the Afro man on there. Yes, I like those. Uh, even more now than ever, players are realizing, hey, I have a platform 
I can bring about sustainable change in my community, so whether it's my, my dollars or whether it's my time, like I can make a real commitment to a lot of causes happening right now. Oh, snap. So these cleats, uh, it's for Glory's Hope Sickle Cell Foundation. It's a uh, foundation that started from my si sister who has sickle cell disease. You know, for me, it's, it's an honor to bring awareness to a heart disease. So I've been affected by, you know, with my son. Wearing these cleats and, and you know, and doing little things for Jockey Band family, just bringing awareness to, you know, adopted families, I think that will make all the difference in the world. Coming up next, we get the Bolts' thoughts on facing the Browns, and Nick Hardwick goes goal line to goal line with Trevor Williams. I'll tell you, in getting ready for this team, Hugh Jackson doesn't make it easy. And you look at their offense, they have explosive player at every skill position. So that's, uh, at some point, it's going to click, and they're going to put it all together. This team beat us last year, you know, bottom line. And so. Uh, it won't be a challenge getting ready for this team at all. Quarterback has a great arm. They got a lot of receivers. The running backs have a lot of key weapons on that offense. I think our defense will be prepared by then and we'll be able to stop him. He's a good player. He's a good young player. He's going to be a good player for a long time. And uh, it's, it's very dangerous to have him out there on the edge, but we got guys out there too that can block him. You see him getting better each and every week. The quarterback's a prime example of that. I think last week he had his best game of the year. We would see a you know a talented team that just is trying to figure it out to get consecutive plays in a row, consecutive drives right. We just gotta make sure it doesn't start this weekend. Josh Gordon back this week. Um, that's a big that's a big part of the offense. I mean, so it'll be a good challenge for us. But like always, uh, we're ready to ball. It's going to be a physical game, a uh, technique game, and we just got to continue to keep this roll going and just continue to stay healthy, focus on the fundamentals and get better. I think we match up good. As long as uh, we're all on the same page and we're all doing the same thing, us five and sometimes the back and Phil is all on the same page, um, we can block anybody. Every game they're in, every game they cause problems, every game they cause turnovers. So we got to be ready to zero in on the ground. If you could choose a player on the Chargers who has exceeded expectations this season, chances are you'd pick Trevor Williams. After Jason Verrett went down for the year, Williams was the next man up, and the former undrafted rookie free agent has proved to be an invaluable asset for the Bolts in their secondary. Now's your chance to get to know Williams as he goes goal line to goal line with Nick Hardwick. Welcome to Goal Line to Goal Line presented by MRC. Nick Hardwick with Chargers cornerback Trevor Williams. Trevor, thank you for the time. Thanks for having me. I feel like I got to introduce you a little bit to the Chargers fan base. Undrafted as a rookie, 2016 out of Penn State, and you had to jump into the lineup because of the loss of Jason Verrett. 11 games last year, more of them this year because of the same situation. Do you feel like you put your stake in the ground as a player in the National Football League? Uh, not yet. I'm still working to get to that point. Uh, but, you know, work, hard work, and uh, just dedication. Here they come. Extra man. Car goes out wide. Right. Intercepted. Trevor Williams still on his feet at the 30. Cutting inside of the 20. Left sideline 10. Finally pushed out of bounds. 29-yard interception return for the second-year player out of Penn State. I don't know if you put any stock into this at all because I didn't when I was a player. But Pro Football Focus has you rated as the number 13 cornerback in the National Football League. For an undrafted guy. Just 13? Kind of comes, see what I'm talking so, about? Uh, so do you feel like <laughs> our teams are respecting you more now, or are they coming at you more because of what you got on the other side of the field in Casey Hayward? It can be a little bit of both. Um, in my mindset, I'm always thinking that the opposing team is trying to pick on me because they want to keep you know, from throwing the, the Casey Hayward. Uh, but, you know, they can try as much as they as they want, but I'll make them pay for it. And again, Peterman. And that ball's picked off again. Trevor Williams. And Williams going to take it near midfield. You talk about a team picking on you a little bit, and you feel like that. But you're one-on-one. -on -one, you're out there on an island. What's that like? Well, normally pre-snap, I kind of get a feel if the ball's going to come my direction, uh, especially thinking about third down situations or you look at the quarterback, he might look at the receiver, you know, pre-snap, just letting them know, like, heads up and coming your way. And as a DB, you kind of feel that. You feel like, you know, your name's about to be called and you got to make a play for the defense. And, you know, I thrive off that. I love that competition. Uh, I'm a competitor, true competitor, and um, I just love to compete and win. 
I would say the best compliment you could pay is, I don't even notice him during the game. We don't got to worry about him. We don't notice him. We can just leave him out there on that island all by himself. Yeah, I take that. I, I take that compliment. Three receivers right, looking left. Nowhere to go. Now to the middle of the field. Touchdown! Rivers to Hunter Henry. And he's high stepping and celebrating. The last couple weeks, Phillip Rivers and this offense have been all over the place. Just points, yards, they're really starting to operate at full tilt. What's that do as a defense when before you guys were carrying a, a bunch of that load and now the offense is starting to pick up their end of the bargain? What's that do for your mentality? I think we just feed off each other's energy. Um, like I said earlier, you know, you win games playing good complimentary football when you're dominating on all three phases, uh, special teams, offense, and defense. And uh, once those, that three-headed monster is connecting, we're hard to stop. Did you think at one point in this season you'd have a chance to make a run, not just at the playoffs with the wild card spot, but at the division itself? For sure. You did? Right when we started OTAs, I believe. It. I didn't know when our run would start, but hey, I'm speaking into existence. It's starting now, so we just got to keep this train rolling. Trevor Williams, thank you for the time. That's Thanks goal line to goal line. Best of luck this weekend, buddy. Thank you. Stay tuned as Chargers head coach Anthony Lynn previews the Week 13 game against the Cleveland Browns. The Chargers look to make it three straight victories in a row this week, but that starts by taking on the winless Cleveland Browns this Sunday. Here's Chargers head coach Anthony Lynn and ABC's Ashley Brewer discussing why the team isn't overlooking the Browns, the impact of Keenan Allen, and more. Well, Coach, congratulations. That was a huge win in Dallas. I'm sure you're feeling good, and you guys are a game back in the division now. I mean, how are you feeling? How's the team feeling right now? No, everyone's feeling great. You know, we feel like we're trending in the right direction, but we also know we're not out of this hole yet. We have a lot of work to do. Certainly. With playoffs approaching, I mean, is that in your mind? Are you thinking and talking about, okay, we're this close. We just need this to happen. Well, you know, I'm not afraid to talk about the big picture. You know, we, we take them one at a time, but also I like to put the season in front of the guys and let them know exactly what we're playing for. And, and we're, we're still in the hunt for a playoff spot. Yeah, one thing you guys said was that you were going to loosen the reins on Phillip Rivers, let him kind of take more risks, do other things. How pleased are you with his performance? I mean, his performance the last couple of weeks have been very good. I love the way he's taking care of the football. You know, we wanted to go down the field with the ball more because we knew we had to score more points. And I think he's done a heck of a job of finding that balance, taking care of the ball and taking the shots down the field and, uh, and just getting rid of the ball, helping our offensive line and, and pass protection. Desmond King has really stepped up. What have you seen from him? How has he really separated himself? Well, you know, he's, he's a rookie. He's very solid. You know, he still makes some of those rookie mistakes, but he's always been a playmaker mm -hmm. uh, in high school, in college, and even now, you know, he's going to make plays. But at the same time, he's still, you know, he's still a rookie. He's still learning. He's not there yet, yeah. but I, I love the pick six he had last week. Certainly. Well, you said in the press conference on Monday that your team is not bowl eligible yet. So how are you motivating them to get 500, to, to push past and continue to win out? Well, I think when you have to motivate a team that's five and six, I think you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this team here, they're, they're, they're motivated. They wake up motivated. And they know we have a lot of work to do. And no, we're not there yet. One of the things we say is you never got it. You know, you think you have it, and that's when you messed up. But uh, they come to work every single day, and I don't have to worry about this team getting complacent or overconfident because they, they know the situation that we're in, and, and uh, we're not out of the woods. If the playoffs started next week, we're out looking in. Yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do. Certainly. Now you face a Browns team that hasn't even won a game yet. So how do you make sure the team doesn't overlook a team like that and say, okay, we got it easy this week? Well, you watch the Browns play, and they play for four quarters. That team plays hard, and I respect that about them. You know, uh, and, and you're gonna have to go out and play four quarters. But uh, for a team that came, that, well, we went there and they beat us last year. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Not, not, not being ready to play the Browns this year. Certainly, and just another threat is Josh Gordon. He's coming back from his suspension. Uh, Josh Gordon. I'm coming sure back. he'll be yeah. fired up. So, what are your expectations in covering him? You know, he hadn't played since 214, but the last time he played, he was all pro. And he's a young man, very gifted. Uh, I'm sure they're going to find a way to get him involved. All right, thank you so much. Let's make it three in a row, Coach. Let's do thank it. Thank you. Thanks for watching Access Chargers presented by Toyota. A big thank you to Chargers head coach Anthony Lynn, our radio team of Matt Moneysmith and Nick Hardwick, and of course, Trevor Williams. If you missed any part of this week's show, be sure to check out Chargers.com for all of our exclusive content. I'm your host, Haley Elwood. See you next.